A terrible machine creates a virus that turns people into mutants. Humanity is forced to flee Earth to avoid becoming infected. A great ancient warrior named Nagdan dedicated his life to fighting evil. He united the tribes of men and buried a terrible machine that came from outer space deep in the ground. While the machine was on the surface, it turned people into mutants. Watching people suffer was painful for Nagdan. With great difficulty and great loss of life, his army managed to defeat the mutants. After that, the great warrior and his followers banded together in a brotherhood and vowed to do everything to make sure the machine wasn't found, and the horror didn't reoccur. But Nagdan had no idea that his labors would be in vain in the future. Many hundreds of years have passed, and the year 2707 has come. People had forgotten about the machine. Control of the world was divided among four corporations. The most powerful of them, the Capital and Bauhaus, are engaged in endless wars over the remaining natural resources. The Bauhaus is preparing to attack the army of the Capital once again. But what the people don't realize is that Between them, beneath them, the machine still waits. The Capital soldiers are sitting in a trench in the rain. The Bauhaus is mercilessly bombarding them with artillery. The commander of the Bauhaus stormtroopers, Lt. Maximilian von Steiner, commands his men to prepare for an attack and completely destroy the enemy. Capital Platoon Commander, Capt. Nathan Rucker, urges his men to remain brave and steadfast. But the atmosphere in the Capitol Trench is not exactly positive. There are already a lot of wounded and fallen soldiers. Sergeant Mitch Hunter removes their dog tags so he can remember the names of the soldiers and honor their memory. He reports to the commander about the enemy's heavy weaponry and the upcoming attack. Using binoculars, Nathan finds that the attack has indeed begun. The men are having a drink for courage and don't quite understand what they are fighting for. No one has much love for corporations. They don't pay me to believe, sir. They pay you to fuck shit up. The Capitol fires a large cannon at the enemy army. The explosion causes the lid of the dungeon, where the malevolent machine is entombed, to crack. But no one notices it. The Bauhaus responds to the fire with grenades and poison gas, which seeps into the trenches of the Capitol. Not all soldiers manage to put on their gas masks, and many get poisoned. The Bauhaus soldiers break into the enemy trenches. The capital takes casualties. Nathan miraculously saves Hunter's life but is wounded himself. The commander asks his friend. I don't make it out of here. You look after the girls. And the fierce battle continues. Another explosion causes the dungeon roof to finally crack and collapse. People have no idea yet what danger looms over them. Something humanoid crawls out of the hole in the ground. It runs up to a soldier very quickly and takes him down. Behind the creature, many of its friends crawl out. They enter the capital trench and brutally take out the soldiers. The Bauhaus soldiers find a huge number of lifeless opponents and are amazed at how brutally they have been dealt with. While the Bauhaus military is trying to figure things out, the mutants eliminate them as well. Nathan and Hunter manage to survive. They haven't seen the mutants and believe the Bauhaus soldiers did all of this. Nathan gets out of the trench and encounters the enemy commander, Steiner. The men do not yet know about the mutants, so they take their anger out on each other. They are surrounded by soldiers. Then more mutants emerge from the ground. They quickly massacre the soldiers with their sword hands. The survivors Nathan and Steiner are now on the same side, trying to contain the mutant attack. Hunter and the other survivors run up to them and open fire as well. Unexpectedly, a capital corporal named Asus is seriously wounded. It's about time to leave, because an evacuation plane has just arrived. But someone has to cover the retreat of the survivors. Nathan is trying to save his fighters, so he rushes to the machine gun. He shoots at the mutants mercilessly until he runs out of ammo. Hunter manages to carry the wounded man to the plane, but there's no way Nathan can make it to them in time. The brave man is left alone with the mutants. Soon news of the mutant attack reaches the Order of Nagdan. Their leader, Brother Samuel, and a nun named Severian enter the monastery's most secret room. This is where the most ancient book, The Chronicles of Mutants, is kept. It was written by Nagdan himself and describes how the evil machine can be destroyed. The book says that mutants carry wounded and undead people to the machine, and the machine turns them into terrible monsters. Even all the armies of the world cannot defeat the mutants, because they are too strong. But the Chronicles predict that there is a chosen one in the world who will walk the path of Nagdan and destroy the machine. Samuel goes to a meeting with the heads of all corporations. Monsters have taken over many of the big cities, so the mood is far from rosy. The head of the capital, named Constantine, orders the evacuation of humanity off Earth to commence. But Samuel notes that not all Earthlings will fit on the spaceships. Many will stay here and turn into mutants. And these creatures will not be satisfied with one planet, they will fly into space. Mutants are smart enough to do that. Samuel thinks it is necessary to fight. There is still hope! Give me 20 soldiers and a ship. The monk would only require this crew to infiltrate underground and destroy the machine. But the authorities are still slow to make a decision. 
and life in the cities is becoming unbearable because of the mutants. Evacuating all the people is definitely not possible. Even rescuing all women and children is problematic. Samuel continues to communicate with Constantine in private. The governor cannot fly to Mars because of his poor health, but he wants to help the monk, so he gives him his ship and evacuation tickets. This will help attract soldiers to participate in the mission, because they will give the tickets to their relatives and they will be saved. Samuel, thanks him and quickly leaves to complete the mission. Meanwhile, mutants immediately burst into the room with Constantine. The man holds up well, but these are the last minutes of his life. In the meantime, Hunter goes to visit Nathan's family. He has a hard time telling Nathan's wife that her husband is lost on the battlefield. The woman cries and does not know how she and her daughter are going to survive. After all, they don't even have tickets to evacuate. And they expect us just to wait here and die. Hunter tries to comfort her, but there is nothing he can do to help. In the evening he goes to a bar and dips the dog tags of his former co-workers in whiskey. Suddenly Samuel approaches him and offers to save humanity. But Hunter is disappointed in humanity and has no intention of performing feats. However, the monk hands him tickets for the evacuation. This is a chance for Hunter to save Nathan's family. So now he's ready to consider the important mission. The next day, Nathan's wife prepares a poisonous drink for her and her daughter so they won't suffer. But just then Hunter hands them the tickets. The family is incredibly happy. Eventually, Samuel manages to assemble a team of tough warriors. It includes the jovial soldier Asus, the noble Captain Maguire, the brave Valerie Duval, the fearless Kim Wu, the Bauhaus officer Steiner, the silent nun Severian, and Hunter. At a general meeting, members of the Brotherhood tell them how to destroy the machine. To do so, they will have to navigate through secret underground tunnels. The monks give the soldiers a bomb, which they must attach to the center of the machine and activate with a key. But where the key is, no one knows. And if we can't find it, then the mission will fail. In that case all people will perish. Samuel thinks he is the chosen one who will plant the bomb and save mankind. The monk has no idea that he could be wrong. The main thing the fighters still do not understand is how to fight the mutants. Then Steiner leads the team to a cell where the military has locked up one monster. To destroy it, either a phosphorus bomb, or machine gun fire, or a well-aimed blow with a sword would do. This is what Severian demonstrates, pacifying the rampaging mutant. As he lets out his breath, Hunter is listening to it. It seems to the man that the monster transforms into a human for a second before the end. The team has little time to prepare and say farewell to their past lives. Samuel asks God for help, Severian changes into a battle robe, and the others get drunk. It is time for departure. The warriors receive their sacred swords and board the ship. The steampunk ship gets powered up and the crew flies off into the unknown. During the flight, Duval talks about her children. They are the ones the girl gave the tickets to Mars and is willing to sacrifice herself for them. Kim Wu, on the other hand, gave the tickets to a random pretty lady and has no regrets. Maguire didn't take the tickets at all, but went to fight for the cause. Suddenly the captain notices a civilian ship coming right at them. This is something unexpected. The captain contacts them and asks them to change course, but there is no answer. This is not surprising, since that civilian plane has been hijacked by mutants. They open fire and hit the spaceship. The group is forced to descend into the escape pod. They detach from the ship and open the parachute. But the capsule is too heavy and the parachute slings tear. The capsule heads for the ground at breakneck speed. The crew argue about when to open the spare parachute, as the capsule suddenly crashes into a high-rise building. The capsule flies through it and lands in a field. Everyone is unharmed except Captain Maguire, who is stabbed in the thigh by a huge piece of shrapnel. The captain can no longer be saved. Hunter tries to support him and leaves a grenade for him. Everyone leaves the capsule and walks on unfazed. The captain uses the grenade. The team passes through a town occupied by mutants. Somewhere outside the city is the entrance to the dungeon. It would be a good idea to navigate this way without unnecessary disruption. So the team proceeds with extreme caution. However, Hunter suddenly notices that the evacuation of civilians in this town is going awry. Two soldiers demand exorbitant sums of money from people at the entrance to the ship, or they do not let anyone in. Hunter is infuriated by this injustice. He leaves his crew and goes through the crowd to sort things out with the insolent soldiers. He persuasively tells them to put all the passengers in for free. First you take the kids, and then the women, and then you take the men if there's any room left. However, they don't seem to comply. Then Hunter takes out one of the scoundrels. The other immediately becomes cooperative and promises to put all civilians on the ship. With a sense of accomplishment, Hunter returns to his crew. They have just found the ruins of the old city on the map, which contains the entrance to the dungeon. Steiner promises to shoot the sergeant himself if he puts the mission in jeopardy one more time, and Severian looks at Hunter with great respect. At night they reach a church in an abandoned town and go inside. 
The chronicles mention that there are secret tunnels underneath that can be used to get to the machine. The group arrive in the ruined underground city and sense that they are being watched. The team finds an ancient elevator shaft, just as the chronicles says. They have to repel 60 stories down a rope. The brave Kim Wu sets up a foothold at the top to cover his teammates and make sure no intruders bother them. The team secures the rope and begins the descent. Hunter and Samuel go first. Fucking deep is this thing? The rope runs out, the proper depth is reached, but it doesn't look like the entrance to the tunnel is emerging. Samuel is missing something. He decides to consult the chronicles, while hanging on the rope. The man is so engrossed in the book that he accidentally falls off the rope. Hunter tries to grab hold of him, but the rope tears and the monk falls down. Fortunately, the ground is just a couple of meters down, but here the mutants are already waiting for them. Hunter jumps to Samuel and fires back at the monsters. Steiner is still hanging from the rope, hearing the roar of the monsters from below. He throws a grenade at them. Severian tosses the grenade to the lower floor so that the explosion doesn't hurt them. More mutants come running at the noise. A fierce fight ensues. The group retreats to the next room and tries their best to fight back, but the influx of mutants doesn't stop. They come from above as well, but there they are met by Kim Wu. The guy continuously fires his machine gun at the mutants until he runs out of ammunition. Then the mutants climb into the elevator cabin. The elevator cabin is unable to withstand the weight and collapses. The cabin falls to the bottom of the shaft along with Kim. Right on top of the mutants, a powerful explosion erupts, but there are still survivors among the monsters. Kim's hand emerges from under the rubble with a grenade without a pin. The second explosion is even stronger. Now the mutants are finally gone, but unfortunately so is Kim. Duval looks at the ruins in pain. She has grown fond of Kim, and now she misses him, but the journey must continue. During their respite, Samuel consults the Chronicles again. Hunter is starting to get tense. He doesn't understand what's so special about this book. The monk argues that the power is not in the book, but in faith in God and the victory of good over evil. You should have a little faith. And that really helps Samuel find the entrance to the tunnel. The group slowly crawl out into it and sneak along the wall. Down below, hundreds of mutants are dragging wounded people to their infernal machine. Hunter takes a closer look and notices among the prisoners the still alive Nathan. If Hunter doesn't intervene, his friend will undergo a transformation by the machine and become a mutant. This cannot be allowed to happen. Steiner, fearing death, orders Hunter to stay, but he embarks on a mission to rescue Nathan anyway. The German hesitates to shoot the sergeant and walks on toward the machine with the others. Hunter descends to the bottom of the tunnel and stealthily eliminates the mutant who is dragging Nathan. He then rushes to his friend and helps him up. Nate is concerned about his family more than anything else. When he hears that they are going to Mars, he calms down. Hunter wants to give his friend first aid and get him out of the cave. But apparently, he has only lasted so far because he is worried about his family. In fact, Nathan is already almost gone. He asks Hunter to leave him and continue his mission. Finish your mission. I'm not asking you to. Nathan asks his friend with his last strength to tell his family that he loves them. Hunter realizes that things are quite bad and puts his friend out of his misery. Suppressing his emotions, he sets out to honor Nathan's wishes and save humanity. The rest of the team walks silently across the narrow bridge just above the mutant path. Suddenly a pebble falls from the bridge, and its noise attracts the attention of the monsters. This causes Steiner to stumble and fall, barely managing to grab hold of it. He was the one who carried the bomb and now attempts to pass it to his friends. Nevertheless, Steiner is not able to hold on and falls off. He is immediately attacked by mutants. Samuel thinks they should leave Steiner and walk away, but the team disagrees. We have to go on! We're still human, Samuel. The friends jump in and bravely engage the monsters. After all, it's compassion and mutual support that makes them human. They all fight bravely, but there are too many monsters. Almost all of the men are badly wounded, and Samuel passes away. The monsters drag everyone but Severian to their machine. Hunter arrives at the sound of battle, but it is too late. Amidst the charred remains, he finds Asus's dog tag. Hunter fights off a monster's attack and learns of what happened from Severian. Out of shock, the nun even breaks her vow of silence. Hunter picks up the pieces of the tattered holy book and asks Severian to read it in order to figure out where to go. But the woman does not understand a word of the book, she just believes in it. This makes Hunter very angry, and he answers her with the words of his friend Nathan. I'm not paid to believe. I'm made to fuck shit up. He decides to get to the center of the cave and improvise. The friends find the mutant lair and quietly set explosives everywhere. There is an explosion that destroys many monsters. Then Hunter runs to free the wounded but still alive Steiner and Duval. The mutants were about to throw them into a pit in the middle of the cave but didn't get the chance. A strange mechanism, to which the people are attached, rotates in the pit. Apparently, they turn into mutants after a complete rotation. The wounded come to their senses and are determined to fight on. Severian and Duval tie themselves with a rope and head down to the heart of the machine. 
Hunter and Steiner hold the rope from above. After the explosion, the tunnel exit is blocked by a pile of rocks, but the monsters begin to slowly break through. Then Steiner drops the rope and engages the mutants. It is extremely difficult for Hunter to hold the rope himself, and he is pulled to the very edge of the pit. Steiner gets close to the monsters, pulls the pin of the grenade and gives one last salute to the brave Hunter. Thanks to the explosion, the mutant's gone, but Hunter couldn't hold on and falls down on the wheel of the machine. There are ropes coming out of it and secure the guy's arms and legs. It's like he's caught on a hellish conveyor belt, where scary steampunk mechanisms turn people into monsters. Hunter gets exposed to radiation, and then he gets several chips implanted. The last chip is supposed to go into his head, but Hunter resists with all his strength. He miraculously manages to free his hands and disarm one mechanism. But the whole system can't be shut down that easily. At this point, the women have just reached the heart of the machine. The slightly transformed Hunter approaches them. At first, they mistake him for a monster, but the man has not had time to fully mutate. He has retained his consciousness. The friends all get to the platform together. The mutants sense something is wrong and go after them. Severian and Duval fight off the monsters while Hunter tries to properly calibrate the machine and hook up the ancient bomb, but he doesn't understand where to put the detonator. Also, he still doesn't have the key, without which the detonation won't start. Hunter consults the drawings from the Chronicles, but still does not understand how it should work. Meanwhile, the mutated Samuel approaches Severian. The girl can't believe that her mentor turned into a monster. Severian, no! That's not Samuel! However, she tries to fight him. Meanwhile, the brave Duval passes away in a fight with another mutant. Hunter takes him out, and now Samuel is the last monster left. But Severian hesitates and cannot finish him off. She simply gives up, and the mutant takes her out. Finally, Severian drops her sword on the slab and passes away. Hunter and Samuel meet in a final duel. The former monk is much stronger and faster, so Hunter has a hard time, but he manages to get Samuel onto the machine and use his friend's name tags to finish the monster off properly. Yet he throws the man to the floor, and suddenly Hunter realizes that Severian's sword is not just a sword, it is the key to destroying the machine. He simultaneously inserts the key into the machine and disposes of the last mutant. The entire structure immediately transforms into a spaceship that is preparing to take off. Samuel suddenly wakes up as a human. He asks Hunter to believe and jump off the platform before it is too late. Having faith, Hunter jumps down and falls into the water. He makes it safely to the shore of the cave grotto, and the ship breaks free from the dungeon and flies off into space. This is how the faithless warrior saved humanity from the ancient evil. And what do you think? Will there be a mutant invasion in the future?